Welcome parents. This is our information evening for our year groups uh, regarding our assessment procedures that we use at Gosford High School. Uh, these evenings are usually a on a face-to-face -face evening and we would have you at our hall and we'd be going through the procedures and the uh, processes that we have in place at Gosford High School to ensure that all of our assessment tasks are given to all of the students in a fair and equitable manner and that the students have the best chances of uh, achieving their highest results. Uh, today you're going to hear from each of our year advisors and you will also hear from the, uh, the head teacher, the deputy, and you'll hear about some of the welfare supports that we have in place that are there to support the students at Gosford High School. Um, everything here is obviously built around giving students at Gosford High School that have a high potential and a gifted education um, programs the best opportunities. And through our assessment processes in the booklets that each of you have been um, given access to, you'll be able to see information that allows students to um, plan and prepare the best they can for the assessments each year. Uh, when we hear from each of the um, presenters, you'll notice that there's some common themes that come through. And when we have our ex-students coming back and talking to Year 12 students, uh, they also echo the same messages to the students, and that all begins with planning. Uh, a well-planned well year and um, organisation is really the key to success. Uh, not only does it allow you to know when the assessment tasks are going to occur, and when there's um, bunching of tasks, which inevitably occurs every year, um, it also allows you to put, a, put the chances of stress and anxiety um, I guess further at bay, which is a really um, a big a big part of making um, the the journey through each year successful. Uh, the assessment um, processes that we have in place, right from year seven right through to year twelve, really are mirrored in each year group. Um, we do this so that students are well prepared when they finally get to stage six for the expectations of the HSC. Um, with that being the final goal for us um, and you know the transition usually to university, uh, we find that by making assessment tasks having the same format all the way through school, students are familiar and able to um, best succeed. In each task you'll see due dates, you'll see a, a very detailed description of what the expectations are and you'll also find information about what the teachers expect in the marking criteria. Um, please listen carefully to each of the presentations and obviously you'll be able to go back through it and watch. But the real key is to having a look at that assessment book, looking at the actual subjects your child's enrolled in, and then making sure that you mark on the calendars or the planning um, tools that we've given you, um, opportunities and, and putting down the, the times that they will occur. Um, we do look forward to uh, next week when we can move back to normal operations. Uh, today we're filming on Friday the 25th of February, which is the last day where we have a lot of the COVID restrictions in place at school. And uh, as of next week, we're expecting that we'll be able to do more of these evenings and more information where we'll be able to have parents on site and uh, get to meet you face to face and actually talk about uh, your, your individual child's needs and how we can assist you. But uh, as always, communication is the key. Please be in touch. If there's anything that we can do to support your child, um, contact the school. You can contact us through the school uh, email or you can contact us through the front office in uh, office hours and uh, we can direct you to the right person. And in most cases, that person will be the year advisor. So familiarise yourself with the booklet, uh, know the year advisors, and um, I really do hope you find the rest of the information in this short webinar useful. Thank you very much. Hello, my name is Mr. Abra. I'm the Year 10 Year Advisor, and you can find me in the Science Staff Room. And I'm uh, Grace Stockwell and I'm in the PE department and we play with a lot of ball. You can find me in the PDH PE department on uh, B Block. And just a little bit about what we do. So um, being uh, high school years, often uh, students will find from time to time that they need a bit of support. Um, that could be 
um, with uh, keeping up with your studies or feeling some anxiety around studies, um, just with uh, friendship groups and just any general support to help you to do well at school and to be happy. Um, we are here for you guys. You can find us anytime or send us an email. And looking forward to helping you uh, throughout the rest of your school and, uh, until yeah. you finish year 12. And so it's not just um, solving problems, it's also creating better connections. Um, at the end of this year in year 10, you'll have some celebrations. You'll have celebrations in uh, year 11. You might go on a study camp and year 12, you graduate together. So we're trying to build team and trust and confidence in each other. And as we do that, and as you get more mature, it sort of meshes together. And hopefully by the end of your school career, you'll feel like you are actually belonging to a wonderful group of people which you already know you are. The Gossip High School school community. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and we welcome all the new students this year as well. And next year there'll probably be more new students. So we hope to think that everyone can be included in our groups. Thank you. Hello parents and caregivers of New Town High School 2022. My name is Shani Clempett and I'm the Deputy Principal of Years 8, 10 and 12 this year. In this recorded presentation, I will be talking you through the assessment rules and processes associated with your child this year, how they can plan for success and how you can support your child with the planning of their success and the various ways that your student can become involved in the school and the ways that they are acknowledged throughout the year. On the screen is the cover page of the Year 10 2022 Assessment Booklet. This has been emailed to all parents and caregivers. It's also located on the parent portal for your reference. Your children have been given a hard copy of the assessment policy portion of this booklet. They've also received a digital copy of the complete booklet, including the assessment schedules. I've also spoken to Year 10 at a year meeting about the key points associated with the policy that they need to adhere to for this year. It is our responsibility as a school to ensure that all NESA compliance within curriculum and assessment is adhered to. For more information, um, please go to the Education Standards at NESA on their homepage. It is a really good reference for parents and students to know more about the curriculum and what the procedures entail. It is really around the student's proactive approach to their assessments and their uh, working in the classroom uh, and to regularly communicate with their teachers around any challenges or issues that they're experiencing. Early communication around this area um, from the student to the teacher ensures that they can be supported in the classroom and beyond. It is your child's responsibility to meet all course and school requirements, including attendance at classes. Uh, it's their responsibility to apply themselves with diligence and sustained effort to the set work and experiences provided in each course. And it is their responsibility to be aware of and follow the assessment requirements and procedures. There will be an assessment schedule for every subject that your child undertakes in Year 10. These schedules are located in the back half of the assessment booklet for Year 10. Use the schedules to plan with your child so they can organise them th themselves to prepare and submit a test assessment tasks to their personal best. An assessment task notification is the actual assessment task that's given out at least two weeks prior to the published time frame in the booklet. I will be going through this in the next few slides. Assessment task no notifications will be given to the child in class or uploaded to the class Google Classroom and they are also uploaded to the parent portal for your reference. Here is an example of an assessment schedule. This is the Year 10 assessment schedule for English in Year 10 2022. You'll see that there are four tasks across the year for Year 10 in English. The first task is a multimodal response. The second is a written response. The third is also a written response. And the fourth assessment task is a portfolio. The next line down indicates the timing of these assessment tasks, when they will be submitted. The exact date will be actually on the notification. 
The next line down indicates the outcomes that are being assessed in each of these assessment tasks. And the final line determines the weighting. So the four tasks are worth 25% each, totaling 100% for Year 10 English 2022. Here we have um, an example. Well, this is actually the um, Year 10 English Assessment Task 1. Um, and you'll see right up the top of the notification um, how, what number task it is, what uh, type of assessment it is, modernism, the weighting for the task, 25%, and the due date and time of the task. Underneath that, we have the outcomes that will be assessed. So that will be uh, what the students will be getting marked on within the task. Then in the middle of the, the notification is the description of the task. So that is what the students are, have to do for the task. There's specific instructions of how they can prepare, what they need to do, um, how they are to present it, etc. For example, the speech length is four to five minutes. And their due date is the 25th of March, period three. So there's the specific time of the um, actual submission. Down the bottom, there's just an indication for the students and yourselves of um, what preparation needs to go into this task um, and how you, they will be assessed on the outcomes within the task. As part of the assessment task notification, there is a marking criteria indicating the range of marks within the task. In this case, for the English assessment task one, the students are marked out of 20 and there is a range of marks there and within the boxes, uh, uh, within the marks there is the gradually increase, increasing level of sophistication um, moving up to the box A. Um, and so students that would wanting to get results between 17 and 20 have to um, demonstrate all of those skills in their writing, in their speech, in the marking criteria for that task. I have attached um, some blank pro formas of these to the Google Classroom and I will also place some on the parent portal for you to print off so that you can sit down with your child and plan accordingly when they have assessment tasks coming up. On the top there is an example of um, a student who has blocked out periods of time for um, planning for homework. In this particular case, the student works a little bit, socializes, dinner with family at dinner time, and what their, their weekends look like. Um, so it, your, everyone will be different. However, if there's a visual plan um, and some structure, to preparation, uh, the students who do that, we see them succeed more. So please ask your child to, um, you know, sit with you, show them your assessment task, their assessment task notifications, and if they have misplaced them, um, remember they're on the parent portal for you to print off so you can plan together. We have quite a rigorous absence, mis illness and misadventure process at the school. This is to ensure that all students um, have the same opportunities and no one is advantaged, no one is disadvantaged and everything is fair and equitable for all. Um, so we, we ask your um, support around these guidelines in the booklet and suggest that you read the, these guidelines uh, through the booklet as well. So if your child is absent on the day of an assessment task, um, please notify the office by 9am of the day of the assessment and your child will, will need to um, get a medical certificate. If you have prior knowledge of your, your child being absent from school, for example, if they have a sporting commitment um, representing the school or an external uh, extracurricular activity or something that's going to impact on them attending the assessment task, please contact the school as soon as you are, know about that clash and we will put a process in place to ensure that your child is accommodated for. There will be an, an illness misadventure form to uh, send home that you will be uh, adding a letter to to say why your child won't be able to make the assessment and we will make accommodations for them to sit the task either before or immediately after they return to school. If your child is absent, they will be at the first day back at school, they will be doing the assessment tasks that they have missed and they will also be needing to fill in the absence paperwork. 
So I'm sure that you'll support our process to make sure that all assessment tasks at Gosford High School are equitable and fair for all students. The assessment illness and misadventure process that I've just explained with you um, is quite lengthy. However, the flowchart towards the rear of the assessment policy booklet um, is a reference for you to follow the process that you need to do and contact the school should you need to do so. Technology and assessment tasks. Technology failure is not cause for an appeal um, for any assessment tasks. Uh, we encourage you to read the technology in, ass in assessment tasks um, section in the, in the policy uh, with your child and, and there are many ways that they can back up their work in a different um, in different ways. Some of them are on the screen, the, the rest of them are in the assessment policy booklet. But please, technology, be careful, save everything as you go and have a backup at all times. Here is the process and the appeal form for should anything happen uh, if you're absent or ill. Um, so you would be collecting your form immediately um, on when you turn, return to school should you be ill from the Deputy Principal's Office. Um, please ensure that the form is complete, including anything to support your form. So that would be a parent letter, screenshots, whatever you need, emails um, to support your appeal application attach the supporting documentation to the appeal form and submit the form to the deputy principal within two days. This needs to be quite a prompt process so that the people involved can be contacted and there can be an, an outcome. So the form and the um, flowchart there are located in the back of the assessment policy booklets. There are many ways that students are recognised and uh, their work is celebrated at Gosford High School. In the first instance, in class, um, your child could be awarded a merit and these merits accumulate across the years. So when your child receives the amount of merits in the table there, they would be getting a formal merit award and some of those are present uh, on the screen there. So a merit award is after 20 merits, year advice award is after 40 merits, deputy principal, etc., etc. These are posted home to students um, and can be put into portfolios, particularly leading into university um, as um, a record of excellence across the years at Gosford High School. At Gosford High School, we have faculty awards. This means that each of our faculty areas each semester put forward a couple of students from each class. It could be for achievement, improvement, commitment or effort and those awards are posted home. And there is an example of a visual arts faculty award on the screen there. The children can also participate in house games and if they participate in the house games, which are done at lunch and run by our house captains, they also um, have a point that goes towards their house. If your child receives a merit in class, that also goes towards their house points. Phones and digital time. Student phones are to be turned off or on silent and in bags during class time. This is so it doesn't distract the student and their focus on the teaching and learning occurring in the classroom. And it's also, it, it's a distractor to the teacher as well, who is offering the delivery of the lessons. If you need to contact your child at all, you can do that through the front office and your child will, will get the message through our front office. Um, another thing that we always uh, communicate to our parent body is um, technology and phones at home. Um, where is the phone located during the night? Um, we all need to get our, a good night's sleep, particularly children. So um, could we please ask your support in monitoring your child's screen time through the night um, so that they can get a good night's sleep and come to school fresh, ready to learn. Thank you very much for your support with this request. A good way to keep abreast of what's happening across the school is through our social pages of Gosford High School Facebook and Instagram pages. 
These celebrate success, achievements and post announcements of upcoming events to all of our parent um, body and wider community. Most communication to the Year 10 cohort is done via the Year 10 Google Classroom. The code to join and the main page photo is there. Um, so this is the main platform that we communicate with the students. Please encourage your child to keep engaged with this page to find out all of the current information for the Year, year 10 cohort. Due to our unique selective school environment, it's essential that we provide opportunities for our students to feel connected at Gosford High School. House games, as mentioned earlier, provide a way for students to mix with cohorts 7 to 12 in a really fun and engaging way. So please encourage your child to become in the house games at lunch times. Year 10 have year meetings, but they also attend whole school assemblies and COVID guidelines lifting sees us return to our normal general assemblies on the COLA, which will be good for everybody. Year 10 are encouraged to participate in whole school wellbeing events. The leadership team in year 12 um, run whole school events and year 10 aspiring to be a leader in year 12 are really encouraged to demonstrate their leadership skills. Year 10 will have targeted wellbeing programs that uh, sit contextually with that particular cohort. Um, year 10 students are also encouraged to be involved in sporting teams across the school uh, to represent Gosford High School and all of the extracurricular activities that Gosford High School offers. We are also going to be starting up our lunchtime clubs once again run by our leadership team to support the culture of the school and get to know everybody at lunchtimes. Parents and caregivers have access to the parent portal at Gosford High School um, so that they can download permission notes, um, they can access assessment task notifications that I spoke about earlier, and also school reports. If you have any difficulties accessing the parent portal, please contact us at school, in particular our head teacher technology, Mr. Brian Jackson. His email is also on the screen that you can email him direct with your um, request for assistance. That's it. Thank you very much for your time watching the presentation. Uh, year 10 Year Advisor is Mr. John Abram from the Science Faculty, should you need to contact him regarding your child in Year 10. Mrs. Stockwell is his assistant in the case that Mr. Abram is away. Chris Howe, our Head Teacher Welfare, can be contacted for anything around your child's welfare or learning and support disability provisions. And myself as your child's Deputy Principal. Thank you. Hi, I'm Mr. Howe, the Head Teacher Welfare at Gosford High School. My role is to help support your young person with their wellbeing in their time at Gosford. I have a large team that I work alongside who when we're all here um, to look after the pastoral needs of your young person. For example, my year advisor team um, work with every year group, of course, and then the first point of contact if there's a, an issue or concern um, that you'd like to raise with us, or just to keep us up to date with what's going on with your young person. The other people in my team, I have a school counsellor every day. Uh, I also have a student support officer, a wellbeing nurse, um, and a learning support team as well. And they're all there, as I said before, to support um, your young person's needs and support their wellbeing at school. We also run a number of wellbeing programs um, and educational programs around topics uh, which are of relevance and importance uh, as your student is going through their high school journey too. Um, and as I said, the, our main job is to try and ensure that your young person comes to school happy and is successful uh, and is able to kind of maintain a healthy work life and study balance um, and um, yeah, thrive in this environment and uh, that's what we really aim to do. If you've got any questions or like to know anything more about our wellbeing and learning um, support, um, please get in contact with the school uh, and as I said, the communication is really important so please reach out if you need anything. Thanks.